The following is a presentation of TFNN. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Every trading day, live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Call now, toll free at 877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Welcome, folks. Appreciate your growl and a problem with us out here. We have the Dow Industries down 69, NASDAQ down 17, S&P's off 8. When you started the news, it was green. Yeah, things move quickly right now. <laughs> gold, gold contract down a buck, trading at 1465. We got oil, we got silver down 13 cents, 16 dollars 88 cents. An ounce light sweet crude off a buck, 56 dollars 16 cents a barrel. Notes and bonds, you get the 10 year up five ticks, 128.18, the 30 year up nine at 120 at 156.30. King dollar, king dollar up 171 ticks, trading at 98.312. The euro is at 110. The yen is at 109.18, and the pound is at 128 to 1 U.S. dollar. And why don't we get to the news driving all that action right now? That was quite a drive, man. Surprise, surprise, man. Yeah. So you got President Trump out there with reporters this morning, just in the last few minutes, right after 10 a.m., saying he has not agreed to full tariff rollback with China. Um, and somehow the market finds that surprising, and we're pulling back after the news yesterday that China said that... Uh, They've kind of come to an agreement that they'll both roll back yeah. uh, all Trump their tariffs. Trump said, well, China wants a possible reversal of tariffs imposed in the trade. Well, he won't fully roll them back. Yeah, and that uh, just took uh, 10 quick points off the S&P. <laughs> Seriously. And that, that wasn't, uh, you know, I thought it was a tweet when it first came out, but that's evidently on the lawn of the White House right now, talking with uh, reporters. I don't know if it's on the lawn. It's somewhere with reporters, right? Yeah. He's on his way golfing, man. It's Friday. That's right, baby. It's a beautiful thing. Disney. Let's go take a look at Disney. This is quite quite a number, man. Uh, sure is. November twelfth, which is, is that Sunday. So I think they're coming out with that streaming service like end of this weekend, and uh, market liking what they had to say last night. That's for sure. So Disney's at five thirty three. I'm not sure what's going on here. There Trading one thirty eight uh, thirty one. So yeah. let's see what they did have to say here. Let's see what they got going on. Maybe this top one. So biggest intraday gain in seven months. Let's see. Well, the results were greeted warmly by Wall Street. Most analysts are focused on the upcoming launch of the Disney Plus. Service should take the wheel in determining the trajectory of the stock from here. One of them talking about, let's see, we might be underestimating the size of the first year of launch, um, given launch dates for the service in Western Europe and potential for more bundles like recently, re recently announced with Verizon. Yeah. Let's see what they got down They're going to have everyone's going to be a partner. Holy yeah. cow. So let's see. Maybe we'll clip back because um, I saw somewhere they're going to be on. There's, the second one gives you the numbers. Like okay, that. cool. Because they're going to be on Amazon devices, but they beat across the board. Earnings per share, buck 07. Estimate was 95. Yeah. Revenue, 19.1. Estimate was 19.05. Cable networks, 4.24, estimate was 4.1. It's got to be, I mean, media, 6.51, estimate was 6.37. Parks, experience, let's bring it down a little bit, 6.66. Beat it by 100 million, 6.56. I mean, it's staggering when you beat it everywhere. It, it is. Fourth quarter, media networks operating in income, 1.78. It was 1.64. That's amazing. And this has nothing to do with the Disney Plus service, just in terms of beating no, everywhere across no. the board. Um pretty intense it sure is i just want to try and get one more back because i wanted to get the, the the actual talk let's see the prospects yeah so here we go so seven dollar a month service featuring most of the company's best films and tv shows debuts tuesday okay disney had already signed agreements to distribute the product on devices by apple and roku amazon which sells the fire had been a notable holdout as the companies argued over the terms, but agreements with those tech giants, along with promotional tie-in with Verizon, mean Disney Plus can get off to a fast start when it launches next week. Disney, the world's largest entertainment company, is counting on the new, new service, along with Hulu and ESPN Plus, to deliver growth as consumers continue to abandon. It's a pretty cool package when you think Disney's kids, ESPN Sports, 
Hulu's some other stuff that fills the gap, maybe, of, of you know, some I type see. of show. So on the Disney one, Hulu will be on there no, also? No, they're going to oh. be able to package all of those together, though. Oh. They will have okay. something. Disney Plus is going to be its own, seven bucks. I but see. they're going to have, yeah. I believe, a bundle with the three, right. which you might get into as well, which they're not even talking about yet. Probably because they said, listen, let's, let's get Disney Plus out of the oh, gate, yeah. right? And then, because right. they already have, I think they said they've got three, three and a half million ESPN Plus subscribers. Let's see if they get down into it. Um... Let's see. So shares rising, the most since April. Disney soared in April after they first initially outlined um, the ambitious subscriber numbers for the streaming service by 2024. Uh, they got the parks and profits down here, which we said they kind of crushed it out of the park. So let's see what they got. Profit at the company's ESPN network fell due to rising sports programming costs and shrinking cable subscribers. We all know that. Yeah. Earnings at the ABC broadcast network also dropped with fewer TV shows being sold to third parties. Meanwhile, losses to the newly created direct-to-consumer division soared to $740 million. The Disney Plus streaming business is part of that division. So it makes sense. They're yeah. gonna, they, got, they got some uh, infrastructure to build. Disney's film studio continued its strong performance with a remarkable 79% leap in profit. Thanks to hits that included two sto Toy Story 4, Aladdin, uh, the Frozen. company releases Frozen 2 in the final chapter and the final chapter of Star Wars. This, that, that'll, those, those That's should deliver water. some, the final chapter of Star Wars. Are, are people going to be interested in that? They and might be, the, yeah. The thing is, yeah, I would it, say it, so. It feels like we've had the final chapter of Star Wars for about 10 years now. <laughs> I don't know, no, you yeah. must not be keeping up. I think they always had them in the queue. There's always, uh, but this is, I think, the last, but then maybe they'll have the prequels, or they'll have, uh, you know, they'll write some more. And what is a prequel again? Before. Be oh, yeah. right. You have the sequel afterwards, you have right. the prequel, which kind of gives you a, a reference what happened uh, before whatever you've watched previously. Right, wow. Yeah. Let's take a look at some of the higher volume equities out here and see, uh, too early to see whether we're going to get any uh, volume uh, in this market out here today. We have uh, GE is down four cents. No big deal. Walt Disney's the big one. That's up five. Uh, oh, another biotech is biting the dust. We'll go back to that. That's down $25. It's trading at $10. Oh, boy. Uh, Teradata, that's a, that's a big hit. Teradata is down seven bucks. That's trading 23. It could go pro um, up like 10%. Yeah. To, I mean, small potatoes when you look at 491, but up 46 cents from $4.30 yesterday. Yeah. yeah. You get Zillow up four bucks. That's 10, over 10%, $37. You get Dropbox down 172. And how about Gap, right? The CEO mm -hmm. out, they're looking for some, uh, it's tough, tough retail sector to be in. Gap. I, I heard it today reference the khaki king in the 90s. Yeah. Um, the world's come a long way since then. Yeah. Yeah, and there it is, right? I heard it on Bloomberg. No longer the khaki king in the 90s. Gap's been needing a, in need of an overhaul for a very long time, and Art Peck won't be the one to deliver it. Their CEO being fired late Thursday as his turnaround efforts failed to reignite sales growth. Disappointing third quarter performance, sending the shares plummeting and late trading. Um, the apparel company that includes, so you got Gap, Banana Republic, um, so I guess they brought back a member of the founding family to lead the company. Well, it figures out a long-term plan. Yeah, yeah, well, guess what? The the amount of competition, you know, if I go back to when I was your age, as to the amount of competition in the retail business in general, meaning, you know, like you had car keys, you had jeans, right? Khakis. Yeah. I thought you said car keys yeah. for a second. Yeah, <laughs> well, the, um, now... I mean, there are so many brands. There are. There are just like so, so many check this brands. out, though. Although the retailer made several public missteps in recent years, like making blazers without armholes big enough for the average woman, or I mean, that that seems like a pretty fundamental flaw, yeah. making clothes that don't fit people. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I come right back. If you're not currently using the Taz Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The Taz Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. 
Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, so, Boeing, this is uh, pretty intense, folks, when you actually take a look at the aspect uh, when they start talking software. So, uh, what this story is about is that uh, delays... Just, just read the headline, right? The delays in Boeing max return began with a near crash in the simulator. It's okay. pretty remarkable that I can continually... I was literally like, wow, as we're checking this out during the break. Right. And it's, um, but it's just remarkable, man, how... So messed they, up things are over there with yeah. that plane. So but engineers were nearly done re redesigning the software uh, of the grounded 737 in June when some pilots hopped in the simulator to test a few things. Guess what? Didn't go well. The simulator computer glitch caused it to dive aggressively in the, in the way that resembled the problem that had caused the deadly crash off Indonesia and Ethiopia the, months the earlier. The crash is multiple, uh, unfortunately. So bottom line is that you, they, they get some heavy uh, problems here, man. And they, they, I would love to go back right now and, and talk about what the people in charge of Boeing were saying in June as yeah. this was going on. Right. Because it wasn't, hey, all hell's breaking loose in, in these simulators still, you know? Right. Um, yeah. So that led to an extensive redesign of the plane's flight computers that has dragged on for months, repeatedly pushed back the date of its return to service, according to people briefed. The company, which initially expect, expressed confidence it could complete its application to recertify the plane with the FAA within months, now says it hopes to do, for, to do that before the end of the year. In reference here, the airlines are all pricing in that they're not going to have the 737 MAX back in rotation right. until at least next year. Right. Boeing is the only one that somehow is still publicly stating that they hope it's coming back. It's November, man. We're yeah. getting articles like this, and people are going to be jumping on commercial airline flights on nope. the 737 MAX in the next six to seven weeks. I don't buy that. Right. Um, I don't buy anything, they say, to be fair. Excuse me. And so uh, changing the architecture of the jet's twin Flight computers, which drive autopilots and critical instruments, has proven far more laborious than patching the system directly involved in the 737 MAX crashes. So they had to do even more than 
they initially thought. Yeah. I mean, as I said, what was going on initially, man, that this wasn't discovered? It's, it's, uh, I'd say it's, you know, I think it's criminal. I don't know enough about it. They better look into it, man, because I don't see how it's not criminal when all of this stuff comes out in the future. Uh, the redesign has also sparked tensions between aviation regulators and the company. As recently as this week, the FAA and European Aviation Safety Agency, I think that's the um, Euros, yes. similar FAA, right. asked for more documentation of the changes to the computers, said one of the people potentially delaying the certification further. Developing and testing software on airlines is an ex exacting process. Manufacturers may have to demonstrate with extensive testing that a software failure leading to a crash would be as rare as one in a billion. It better be, man. There are a lot of flights that go on on a daily basis. So, you know, you can't say one in a million because guess what? There's millions of flights, oh, yeah. okay? So you can't. Even when, you know, it's really complicated, as I'm sure we can all imagine. Um, it totally makes sense why it takes longer. Compared with the initial redesign of the software system involved in the crashes, which is known as, and it's abbreviated MCAS, Maneuvering Characteristics Augmentation System, the work on the flight computers will likely create an exponential increase in the test required before it's approved. And uh, they said before maybe you had 10, now it could be as many as 100. Doesn't account for the added time to design that before they even test it. And uh, the work on the planes originally focused on MCAS. That was basically what they think may have been responsible for those two crashes. And... Um, it's just remarkable, man, let alone you had the first crash. And Boeing was just kind of covering up what was going on there, yeah. man. Let's take a look at that equity. Yeah, this is going to be a long road for them, man. There's no doubt. <laughs> look, equities hasn't got touched. Yeah. Pretty wild. It is. And this, think... this has a high volume low down at the end. It'll, it'll make its way down here at some point. It's remarkable that none of those gains from 2016 or 2017, because there's, there's, there's two companies, man, Boeing and Airbus. Right. I think the market keeps pricing in. And guess what? Boeing ain't going anywhere, man. Yeah. No. The, the, and if they ain't going anywhere, then the price tag may, may be right. Right. You know? All right. Yeah. Let's go take a look at Zillow and see what they must have come up with numbers here. So Zillow's up about 445. Uh, the low for the year is 26. The high is 51. It's closer to its low, that's for sure. So let's see what they have to say. Whoops. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh, look at this. That's so too funny. So this is going to be high gross, gross numbers. We'll see whether they get any margins in it. Okay, so Zillow reported third quarter revenue that beat estimates. Uh, Zillow posted $745 million, exceeding the average estimate of seven eighteen. It got a boost from its arithmetic. Algorithm. Uh, algorithm driven? Uh, algorithm driven spin on home flipping. Uh, let's see. The company bought... 2,291 homes in the third quarter and sold 1,211, generating 380, generating 385 million in the home segment. Yeah, it's always going to be a big number because houses cost money. But where's the profit? Let me see. In the same period, the company reported just 100, and, well, 11 million in home revenue. Of course, that's we're just talking gross there. The rapid growth has come with mounting losses. Zillow reported an adjusted loss in the segment of 68 million before interest, tax, depreciation, and amortization. Still, investors appear willing to focus on the growth. Oh my God! Yeah. Zillow. So yeah, read that last one, right? Because Zillow's also tweaked the way it sells leads to real estate agents. Premier Agent, the company's online marketing business, generated 241 million in revenue for the quarter. Is stabilized after unpopular changes led to an agent revolt. Uh, the company's testing another marketing strategy called Flex. Yeah. And I remember when this was coming up, right? So they have the algorithms. They're buying the homes. They're yeah. looking to flip them. Um, they're not going to buy and hold. They're going to sell them. I think it was like 90 days or something like that. Just get them out. Yeah, they go in very quickly. They go out very quickly. This yeah. is, that's, let me just look at this. This is, this is fundamentally that's dangerous. My, my take on what they, what they have there. Because you can see your gross numbers can go up dramatically if you're buying houses. There's no doubt about that. But they still only sold half the houses that they bought. Yeah, he's still down from 65, huh? We'll see what happens. Yeah. You're coming into the downdraft out there from uh, November of 2018. Uh, but bottom line is that, it, you know, it's so intriguing. So, so sometimes you don't know, I would say that, well, we'll, we'll find out how much investors actually do work on that. Because it, let, let's say if you were selling, if it was Apple selling their product and you had an expansion of price like that, I could see that, you know, 11 million to what was that, 600 million? Three something, three, okay. whatever, big number. That's yeah. a big number. Yeah. But in houses, that's not. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like every house likes two or three hundred thousand dollars, right? Sure. You know, you, Ten houses is two million dollars. You know. Yeah. Now I wonder why there's nothing over here. I was just looking at the the profit numbers on what they're doing. 
Look at that, all but, losses, yeah. 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 Yep. But the, what what has happened and will will happen, uh, my, my take on this, folks, is that the, and you, you, I suspect you're going to get some of these other companies in it, um, in that same business. Is, and there are plenty of people that absolutely will take a good cash off a quick. Yes. Okay. And their split on this is pretty good, meaning they're, they're, what they're charging. They're charging, the underlying charge is 15%. So they're saying to you, right, okay, great, I'm going to come in and give you 300000 okay, but they have an underlying fee of 15% on that. Okay. okay? Love to hear the details. So they're going to charge them 45000 Is that what because that's what you just said. Yeah. Well, maybe that sounds like too much. I think it may. Yeah, I know you don't like that. We'll, we'll find out. <laughs> I would we'll love to. Out. Okay. Stay right there, folks. We're going to be uh, we're gonna come back with Lou from Spokane, Washington. Dow up, down 51. NASDAQ is flat. S&P is up 4.5. We'll come right back. folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow uh, down 51. NASDAQ is up one. S&Ps are uh, down a four and a half. Let's go to Lou in Spokane, Washington. Morning, Lou. How you doing? Hey, Tom and Tommy. Morning, uh, Lou. Pretty good. Good. Yeah, you guys were mentioning Boeing, and uh, 
I don't know. I think that's a real interesting situation, and, you know, we see it developing here, and it's not developing in a good way. I think it, most would agree with no that. No doubt yeah. about that, man. <laughs> Especially when you get hundreds of lives well, lost. What, it's not you, even... you know what the bottom line, guys, is? Just suppose we finally get this whole thing gone, and uh, they get certified, and all the airlines are flying them, and then we have another crash. What the hell happens then? Well, hopefully that doesn't happen. Then they happen, get rid man. of the plane. Hopefully that doesn't yeah. happen. Because the well, the, you know, it, no, it's I hear going to be a disaster of major proportions. So all these air certifying people are going to make damn sure that doesn't happen. If you know, if that's for sure. If that's for yeah, sure. the bummer is right. though, Lewis, that it already is a disaster of epic proportions. Well, Why didn't they is. do it on the yes, first time? It is. You know, and yes, I know you agree. It's like that's where I it fail is. to but, see how, because we already had one crash. They had reports of it. There were already reports coming out that there were emails in there that their main test pilot was having problems. So right. where was the same amount of, you know, people that were saying, oh, boy, if it ever happens again after we had these internal emails after the first crash, before the first crash, right? Um, and I'm just, you know, sounding off a bit, but it's, it's pretty intense okay. when it happens twice. So what's the difference between twice and three times? Why did it happen, it happen twice? Because right. they, knew the, they knew before the first one. That was the tough part in, in and, my mind on this one. And the larger problem really has to do with they should have made a new plane versus trying to refit a plane. That, and that's yeah. what they it, did. They, there, they, they, there you go, Tom. Yeah. That's, right. my, that's right. what I was going to going to yeah. butt in and, and, and throw into the conversation. Yeah. That's, it would... At some point, they got a backup. See, they, the, the whole premise was we're just going to stick this new monster engine on right. top of a plane we already got that's flying well, certified, isn't crashing, but we're just going to throw this new super big engine on there and right. everything's going to be fine, right? And then the engine was so heavy yes. <laughs> that they had to right. tweak the software to make sure that it would calibrate correctly for much heavier engines, um, you know, it's... it's. And, and you know what we called that in the software industry, Tommy? What is that? You know what we call that? A kludge. You cannot compensate for basic design with software. Right. Well, interesting. No, it's, yeah, yes. we're seeing it in action, right. man. They're you struggling continually. It, it, it kind of works. It usually works right. until it doesn't work. Yeah, right. and not to the tune of we need literally impeccability safety-wise, um, which they, and that's why I say, you know, why, so they had big problems again in June in the testing facility, right? Well, where, they had, yes. the, they had the main tester and pilot having problems before. That's the biggest worry. It's like they're everywhere. So I don't understand how that wasn't and, every. And, well, and you know what the good thing here is? You know, there is a bright thing here is, the damn simulator is better than the avionics. Well, and what they're still doing, though, so check this out. Their, their last press releases as to coming out, they're still fighting. Boeing is still fighting of putting the pilots in the simulator first before they put them back on these planes. And that was, that was it, a big deal because evidently it right. cost a huge amount of money. And to, time, I'm to, sure, to right? To bring them yeah. into simulators yeah. before they get the planes. And they're, they're still fighting that aspect. So. Versus literally just putting them on, like, tablets for training. Yes. That's, that's versus that, which, which is just astounding. Oh, I mean, that's what they want. That's I know. That's what I'm saying. Hey, Ver, you know, versus hey, here's just your, saying. Here's your Apple tablet, man. Yeah, just, just click through the OKs okay, yeah. and you'll, you'll right. be a trained pilot on right. this. It, it's the basic mistake Boeing made in this whole process, guys, because they always said safety is number one. This time they said safety's number two. Number one is saving the bucks. Yep. That's it's a pretty bummer. intense, man. To say yeah. it to the least. So we'll see, man. It's, it is. And we all fly, so it's pretty... Uh... <laughs> you know, and we should have, you know, it falls on us to hold our officials to get the FAA in line, too, because that's why you have regulations, man. And that was a big, big problem, obviously, that we're just passing the buck in terms of self-regulation. Yeah. No, not going to happen, man. Oh. Well, that's what did happen. You it know, is. Going and into it's this, it's a bummer. Exactly what did happen. Yeah. Yep. Well, we appreciate the call, man. Okay, Lou. Have a great one, man. Have a safe one. Okay, well, you know, I appreciate the good work you guys are doing. We appreciate well, the calls, so man. Okay. Have a good weekend. Have a good one. So if, if we go back to Zillow again, folks, okay, we got, it looks like Zillow charged, what is it, 6 to 9%? One price? article we found said yeah. maybe 6 to 9% fees. It just said be careful. It was very general. It's from a site that I've never even heard of. So, again, 
Okay, we're gonna plug that site, listwithclever.com. I'm, I'm not plugging the site. I know, I just, I, I have no idea who this person is that's writing this blog to be, uh, I like to, okay, you don't like to hear that? He's, he's, he's not happy, folks, he's, he's not happy. They see it, why do they see it? You're not happy, okay. So this, this I don't know who is... wrote this, though. This is where they could have a bias as well. That's my only yeah. point. Everybody's got a bias, man. You were talking about 15% fees on Zillow. This person's talking about six to nine. I don't know what the actuality is. I don't know what this site is, who there is. You know, this person could be a real estate seller that does not want, again, people to go through Zillow. So they could be a very bad. So, oh my goodness, yeah. under your breath, they hear no, you. They I, hear you. Why not just say it for them if you're going to say it under your breath? It's, it's the, you just said 15%. I had a problem with that. This guy says six to nine. I don't know right. if that's real either. So. I get it. Okay, everybody's got a bias, man. This person is probably a real estate agent. Nobody that's a real estate agent is going to want homes to be sold through Zillow. So they're going to maybe be a biased statement. See, I think what's going to happen, right? Okay, this should be good. Let's go. Well, no, this is what I think. Okay. What will happen is so Zillow's out there doing it, right? Redfin is trying to figure it out. You'll have a few more of them buying it. Now, right now, they're trying to buy it. I would say that they're trying to buy it at market, under market, wherever that is. And what they are doing is that if they don't move that out, like, I mean, really quick, yeah. like with a month, they go in, you know, trying right. to fix it within a month. That's they for don't sure. move it out in another month. They get on a price very quickly. They do. I think what we'll end up seeing is that they'll end up overpaying in markets to a certain point. And the reason for that, like, they're getting rewarded today because their gross numbers went up so dramatically. Yes. You know, and you know, they're still they're losing money, but the gross number looks good. So yeah. if you if you can get eyeballs to look good, imagine what you can get when you when you look in at the aspect no, that that's you, you valid know, for sure. You you buy what? You buy twenty one hundred houses and your revenue three eighty five. It's the second quarter, goes from right? Eleven million to three eighty-five. And it, 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 I agree with that completely. You no know? matter what, you know, there's no bias to that. They're 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 growing their revenue and they're losing money. Yeah. Uh, the only thing is, it's literally the first quarter they're doing it in. No, I'm with you. You know, right. so so to expect that they're going to crush it and profit in the first quarter, the market may be just liking to see that they're approaching half a billion dollars in revenue in the first quarter, and sixty-eight million dollar loss. That's a big number. We'll see how that grows in, uh, or, or decreases in, in future quarters, for sure. They'll be watching it, man. And you got, uh, there's a $7.7 .7 billion market cap. It's certainly a big market cap. It is, it I is. Know. So, let's go over to bookings. So, bookings... Speaking of online, right? Yeah, you know, they, this thing got killed the day before, and then jumped dramatically when it comes out with his numbers. I think when uh, TripAdvisor, someone came out, yeah, they, so... Look at this. Get some defined. Let's get Kevin Hinks on yeah. the line, man. We need some defined risk with Seriously, bookings. Man. Oof. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I come right back. If you are in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. 
Stay informed each day you trade and get the competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Uh, appreciate you growling a problem with us out here. Now, th this is a really intriguing story, folks. You know, Ken Fish has been in the news a lot, okay? Uh, he's a big money manager, billions of dollars, all right? And the, you know, it, it's, it's a basically what this story is about is that he's using ETNs, exchange traded notes, which are basically debt instruments, okay, in order to juice up. The portfolios. Now, what's intriguing to me about it is this: is that when when Fisher goes out, have you ever heard his ads? Yeah. Okay, so he pushes out his ads that you don't ever buy an annuity, and I don't know anything about annuities, whether they're good or bad. So that, that's not. But he's saying that annuities are bad because the, the the fee structure is too big and all of this. What gets intriguing in this one is that he actually went out, um, did business with uh, does business with Barclays and Credit Suisse, right? They made some ETNs, you know, so that he could juice his portfolio up. But this is the this is the for disclosure. This is what's pretty cool about what's it, well. It's not cool for the clients. What's inside here? Now we understand here at TFNN and all you listeners that totally understand, even if you haven't traded them, because we get so many calls on the leveraged products. Sure. Meaning, you know, we directions one of our you know, big advertisers, okay? Yes. So we have doubles, triples. We know they're daily investment vehicles. You know you're taking a risk. Um, for money manager, however, what this article is about, if we move down a little sure, bit, and, and, yep. and, and, and he uses he uses as a leverage, right? But what this article is stating is that when they're talking to their clients, he had them use a different word here. Now, let me, let me find this in here because what ends up happening is that, let's see. Even though the leverage notes, I had read this this morning, okay? And he uses a different word. When, when the clients are asking about this, he's using a different, he's not calling them uh, leveraged products. He's calling them enhanced products. I believe that's what he's going to do. There you go. Oh, is it here? Is it there? Enhanced strategies. Oh, cool. Okay, right. Um, yeah, can you just read it? I can't sure. see Yep. It. So we got, I mean, this is just the headline, I think. That's okay, right. okay. Enhanced strategies. ETNs emerged about 13 years ago to give investors access to markets, such as currencies or commodities, or as a more tax-efficient way to invest in certain types of companies. For a money manager like Fisher, there's a different appeal, leverage. While much of, Fisher, of Fisher's recent cash exodus has come from large pension funds, wealthy individuals and families make up a lion's share of its assets, with more than $69 billion invested across the more than 65,000 separate accounts. That means Fisher would find it hard to enhance its returns using borrowed money as a hedge fund might. But the firm can use ETNs since they can be bought and sold from multiple clients as easily as a stock. That's where things I think really get interesting, right? Yes. And why he'd be using them. Right. So Fisher currently uses the notes, these notes, 
to get what many of the offering documents describe as quote unquote enhanced exposure to large cap growth stocks in the U.S., global high yield bonds, and Europe's 50 largest companies, data compiled by Bloomberg show. Investment counselors, investment counselors, that should be in quotes as well, yeah. at Fisher were taught to downplay the risks involved with ETNs by calling them enhanced instead of leverage right. when discussing them with clients, according to former employees who asked not to be identified. Yeah, I bet. The firm justified this approach by saying that the ETNs weren't leveraged in the common use of the word since it couldn't lose more than it invested, the people said. Well, do they know that they can lose 100% then, right? No, they don't. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's what I'd say. Exactly. 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 Right. And, and, and we're talking double exposure here, too, by the way, just so you can you know, get this, how, how this, these ETNs are, are going. He doesn't have triple. These are doubles, but okay. even so, it's pretty intense. Such diversification mitigates daily volatility compared to less diversified investments. This is Dillard, the Fisher spokesman. Yeah. So ripple effect. At least five banks is, have issued notes branded with Fisher Investments moniker data compiled by Bloomberg. For customers, the ETNs don't come cheap. The banks charge management, fee, management fees to structure issue and run these products plus a chunky spread to cover their funding cost some of fisher's etns ended up charging at least four percent um the average etf cost 0.48 percent yeah <laughs> it's pretty well any etn downsizing by fisher could ripple through the industry fisher accounts for check it out 70 percent about of assets in goldman sachs group's small etn business and half of the assets in ubs's uh notes yeah, and of course, UBS and Goldman, no comment. Right. Yeah. So, it's, it's so, it's so it's just, it was so intriguing to me reading it. It's like, okay, because what tends to happen, we know when we're trading, you know, the doubles and triples. I think when people are, you know, basically invested for a long period of time, right? No, it's yeah, like, right. you know. Look at, uh, look at that ETN market, man. Fisher, the rest of the world. Yeah. That is quite a piece of the pie when you're talking about. Look at that. Yeah. And that's what they set up here, that uh, dominate more than a quarter of the $22 billion market in right. ETNs. So you got to know what's inside your portfolios. That's, that's what it comes down to. Yeah, let's, uh, one of the Tigers want to look at stamps. What, ha what the heck happened here? They're back, well, baby. In a great way. They're back. Yeah. STMP, I believe it's going to be. STMP. Look at this move. Not quite back to their highs, but no. back from the doldrums, that's 14, for sure. Up 14 bucks. Look at that. Why don't we put a little bit longer time frame just yeah. for reference of their utter collapse. No, even a few years will do it. Yeah. There you go. Well, that's still tough. Yeah. That's why I was like a little, so, you know. Yeah, you're this. down from 284. Yeah. You hit a low of 33 bucks, but you're 300. Hey, it's a three-bagger yeah. since June. So let's um, see what they have to say here. Yeah. Let's see. What do you think? Where are we going? Yeah, Top uh, one? Might hit it, yeah. Might not. There we go. So let's see. Total revenue, $136 million. So down. I want the estimates, though, right? Because we know they might be down. Let's see if we jump around. I'm not sure where that BFW. Let's see if we got here. So they jumped 19% after the company recorded third quarter results above expectations and raised its full year profit and revenue outlook. That'll usually I, they do They made it. a deal with UPS, right? That's what they did, yeah. Not, I don't think yesterday, though. That was already made. Yes, it was that was, exactly. That was one right. of their prior right. um, announcements to kind of right. part of the run that they've had. Um, so we got one analyst here saying stamp still remains a hard stock to get behind given the uncertainty around the United States Postal Service resale negotiations which have been, which although have been extended to the end of 2019, still leave an, op an opening to the downside for revenue and margins in next year and the year following. The new UPS deal is net positive for volumes and customers. You don't like it when there's a but, but likely falls short of U.S. Postal Service economics. That's interesting. I didn't know that they're still in negotiations with the United States Post Office. I did not either. Yeah. I did not either. Yeah, because if they decided the... The first get-go is that they decided not to do business with the post office anymore. So maybe that is part they... of what actually happened last night, because we have here in the earnings conference call, Stamp said that existing reseller agreement were extended through the end of 2019, for that's for U.S. Postal Service. Yeah. Um, yeah, because if they could get it all... I... I'd still be really skeptical. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, I don't... I don't 
Not that I don't understand the service they provide, right? I do, but can you see, can you go to after? We'll, we'll pull it yeah. even after. How much are they worth? Like, as in, is there that much of a piece of the pie? 1.6 billion? I don't know, man. You know? Well, when you it seems like that, that only depend on a couple customers, that that's a, a problem. That business is getting streamlined. Yeah. Why doesn't Amazon just do that deal and yeah. let everybody ship through them, right? Mm. Yeah. Stay right there, yeah. folks. Tell me I'll come right back. It's the same thing. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. Basil Chapman has just announced a live 90-minute webinar he'll be conducting for subscribers to his daily trading newsletter, The Opening Call, which will be taking place Tuesday, November 19th from 5 till 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time, titled A Comprehensive Review of the Chapman Wave Techniques and Market Outlook Ahead for 2020. This is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial to The Opening Call while gaining access to Basil's live subscriber event taking place later this month. With some stock picks up 15 to 30% this year alone, Basil will review many of the Chapman Wave techniques that helped in their successful analysis, as well as providing the sectors and stocks that he thinks will be of importance heading into 2020. For all the details, check out the opening call on the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. And folks, as you come over to our website at TFNN, you are going to see our man, Mr. Basil Chapman, the opening call right under featured content. Basil is going to be doing a live webinar for his subscribers on Tuesday, November 19th, which is going to be a week from this coming Tuesday. That sure is, man. Coming five quick. to six Eastern, five to six thirty Eastern Standard Time. Ninety minutes. Basil's got a lot to talk about, man. Yeah. So he'll be in there talking about a comprehensive review of the Chapman Wave techniques and his market outlook ahead for 2020. So Basil's got some requests from his current subscribers talking about the great picks he's had this year, some 15 to 30 percent winners, and he's going to be reviewing the techniques that helped in their successful analysis. He's going to be talking about the rhythm of price movement he looks at in all time frames. The practical application of the moving averages Basil's using as he writes his opening call newsletter, as he's picking stocks, the arc and cup formations, and that notably Chapman wave notation. He's also going to be looking at the sectors 
and the stocks of importance going into 2020. Basil talks a lot about that sector rotation, right? right. Those notations. Uh, it should be a great webinar. A week from Tuesday, I encourage people get in there, sign up. You gain access to all the archives. You get some time this weekend to check it out. You can check out some of the archive webinars that you gain immediate access to as well. And of course, you got 30 days risk free money back guarantee on that sign up. And, and uh, you know, it's amazing is that, you know, if we just look back, I mean, I know life keeps going forward, everything keeps getting better. But if we look back, you know, if that was, you know, even 10 years ago, 15 years ago, this is where these workshops used to cost money. Yeah. And so it's pretty cool, man. $1,795. I know. And they're it, still being pushed out right now. And, and you're getting, you know. I mean, a lot of these are 90-minute webinars down here, folks. Right. There's six, some right. are 60, I think, but 90, 180, right. 270, 360. That's right. six hours there. You got an hour and a half there, seven and a half hours, plus a month of the newsletter right. every single day. And Basil puts out uh, either a Saturday or a Sunday right. edition. So check it out. Stay right there, folks. we got Thinkers from coming up next. That I'm at Mr. Basil Chapman, Steve Rose, Dave White. I'll be back this afternoon. Thanks, Phil. Thanks, man. Well, go get him, folks.